Hi, this is Lee Strobel, and you're listening to Mike Furchis on the Light Shine program. I actually met sure. you, I actually met you a number of years ago that I'm sure you will not remember at a oh. leadership <laughs> at a leadership conference in Willow Creek. Oh, great! I actually, I'm, uh, they uh, they almost hired me at one time to be the pastor of Harvest Division Ministries. Oh, no kidding! Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, so small world. Like I said, I'm sure you will not remember that, but I will. Uh, uh, I have a few questions. I, those I are make... great conferences. I, we really love doing those conferences. It was a lot of fun. Well, they, they were incredible. I mean, it, and one of the questions I want to ask centers around that I have a ministry called the Virtual Pew. I also uh, am doing a radio program. If I can, this is going to air on the radio program. One of the things I want to ask you about: you're doing a there's a movie being made about you in one of your books. Tell us about that. Right. Um, you know, the Case for Christ is the story of my spiritual journey from atheism to Christianity. And uh, they've made a film, a theatrical release, that'll come out in theaters on April the 7th uh, that tells that story in a very compelling way. It, it's a love story uh, between my wife and I who met as childhood sweethearts, and uh, she was agnostic. I was an atheist. We were pretty happy until a neighbor led her to Jesus, and uh, I freaked out. Uh, as an atheist, was hostile toward Christianity and wanted to get her out of this cult that she was involved in. And it's a story of that journey and uh, the conflict in our marriage and uh, the difficulty uh, it, it we encountered as a result of that. Uh, it's a story about a father and a son relationship. Uh, often atheists have had uh, fathers who have abandoned their family when they were young or had difficult relationships with their fathers. And uh, that father issue is explored in the film as well. Um, it's the story of big city journalism. I was legal editor of the Chicago Tribune. And it's a story of the evidence for the truth of Easter, the truth of the resurrection of Jesus, which established that he really is the unique son of God. So it's both head and heart. It's, it's not a documentary. It's a uh, film with a tremendous cast. Uh, Faye Dunaway, the Academy Award winner and Golden Globe Award winner, uh, has a role in the film. Uh, Academy Award nominee Robert Forster, uh, the best actress on Broadway, according to the Tony Awards, uh, L. Scott Caldwell, is in the film. So we've got a really good cast, and uh, I think it's a compelling story that, regardless of where anybody's at on their spiritual journey, I think they're going to connect with it in one way or the other. Who is it uh, that's producing the film and putting the film out? The studio? It's being put out by Pure Flix. Okay. Uh, Pure Flix did God's Not Dead, God's Not Dead 2. I actually have a small role in God's Not Dead 2. And um, they approached me about a year and a half ago with the idea of doing this film, which I'd never even thought about. And I said, I'll do it as long as it's written by Brian Bird. Uh, Brian's a tremendous screenwriter, a good friend of mine. He's, he wrote most of the Touched by an Angel TV shows, uh, then Calls a Heart on Hallmark Channel is his show. Uh, he wrote Captive and a lot of other motion pictures. And so they agreed, and Brian produced an incredible script. Uh, and the acting is just through the roof. You know, sometimes Christian films are a little cheesy. Sometimes they can have that cringe factor. None of that. I mean, this is a very honest and authentic movie that uh, tells a story without flinching. And uh, uh, it's, it's so authentic that I, uh, you know, watching it uh, as they filmed it was just a, a very emotional experience for Leslie and I. Yeah. Is the final edit complete yet? Have you seen the final edit? Are they still working on it? No. They're still working on it. They've got four editors working on it, and um, I've seen about eight or nine scenes from the film, and uh, I've just been blown away by the quality uh, of the acting, the production, and, uh, you know, they're putting it together, the final version. Uh, uh, April 7th is the uh, premiere date in theaters, and uh, I'm, it, it better be ready by then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's those late-hour uh, editing sessions. Yeah, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have a ministry called the Virtual Pew, probably some connections to that. Uh, David Bruce at Hollywood Jesus at the time uh, had helped get that started, and one of the advisors for that in the early days was George Barna. Uh, oh, yeah. We looked at starting this ministry right after uh, the book Revolution had come out. Uh -huh. and one, of the th one of the things that we do is I, I want you to touch on this. I heard you s share at a leadership conference and talked or prior to the interview starting for the listeners that are listening in. Uh, I heard you at the leadership conference a number of years ago at Willow Creek in Chicago, and you shared a concept that I've tried to incorporate to some extent into the virtual pew and certainly on the Mike Purchase and Light Shine show, and that was a concept I think you called at the time, if I remember correctly, ricochet evangelism. 
And yeah. and for, yeah. for 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 your knowledge, this program airs on a non-Christian station, and uh-huh. we have predominantly non-Christian listeners. And I have a ministry when we started the virtual pew doing social media. Uh, back when we were getting some advice from Barn and David Bruce at the time, we we do a lot of social media and some call our organization the first online church. Although I hate that description, but we have a lot of contacts online. And so one of the things I did is I went online and I asked the question, "Hey, I'm getting to the inter- I'm getting to interview Lee Strobel. If you could ask him anything, what would you ask him?" And it's some, ah. it's somewhat of the typical. Uh, Questions that people have, but there was a there's a dear friend of mine out of Toronto uh, who is gay, has been in a re- relationship for 28 years with his partner, and then I had a, had another friend from Greenville, Tennessee, uh, and they asked kind of basically the same question. And the question is is where is God in all of the disasters and all of the problems in the world? Can you respond to that? Yeah, in my book, The Case for Faith, I, I have a whole chapter on that because it's a, it's a challenging question. It's the number one question that uh, non-believers generally ask is how can a loving God allow uh, pain and suffering and tragedy in the world? Um, and it's one of those questions that people ask uh, if they're going through a tragedy, in which case they don't really want an answer. They want, I think, someone to be Jesus to them and present in their lives to walk them through whatever they're going through. Or some people ask it out of intellectual curiosity. And I think Christianity has a good answer for it, that uh, God uh, created the world good, um, that uh, he um, uh, created humankind with free will so that uh, we could uh, choose to love him or not to love him and choose to love each other or not to love each other because love must involve a choice. And uh, we've taken that free will, and unfortunately we've, uh, we've, we've, instead of holding food in our hand to other people, we often hold a gun in our hand, and, and uh, we hurt each other, and um, tragedies befall us as a result. Um, and we have a world that has therefore fallen uh, from what God had created it to be. Uh, now, he promises to restore it, but uh, in the meantime, I think he, he uses the difficult circumstances of our life uh, to draw us to him, to draw us to each other. Uh, you know, there, there are some positives that can come out of it, and, and um God says that the, the day will come when, um, you know, it, it will be resolved and, and the curtain will close on history and, and, and uh, evil will be judged and dealt with uh, and uh, so forth. So, uh, yeah, I, it's, a, it's one of those questions that to give a 60-second answer is always insufficient. <laughs> and so in my book, Case for Easter, I, I give about a 55-page answer to that question that's really my best effort to thoroughly uh, explore it and, uh, and and to provide an answer that's satisfying. You know, um, it is, as I say, the number one question or, or objection opposed to Christianity. But on the other hand, we have 20 uh, 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 species of evidence on the other side that point powerfully and persuasively toward the truth of Christianity. And so you put them on a scale and you go, you know, as difficult as that question is and as personal as it is, uh, a, we do have uh, an answer, I think, from the Christian perspective that makes sense. But uh, B, uh, it doesn't outweigh the persuasive affirmative evidence that Jesus is who he claimed to be. I was talking to a friend yesterday that uh, he actually at one time lived with Keith Green and and participated with him as a musician. Wow. And it seems that a lot of Christians are going through struggles to where it almost seems like the church is having a very difficult time to some extent, with some within the church, I don't want to make a generalization, at making sure that we point to Christ as the one who is infallible as opposed to ourselves who are fallible. Is that a, is that a yeah, fair assumption? We, we, yeah, we, we, all, we all are imperfect uh, ambassadors, and uh, you know, we continue to make bad choices from time to time that uh, we end up regretting and confessing and receiving forgiveness for, but... Um, you know, we, we're imperfect people who have um, unfortunately chosen the easy way as opposed to the right way uh, sometimes. Uh, and that can turn off people who look at the church and, and see things that don't conform to what they believe uh, should be true of Christians. Um, but I don't think, again, that that uh, negates the affirmative evidence. You know, the thing about Christianity is it's an investigatable faith that it makes certain claims about history, about Jesus having lived, having died, having been encountered afterwards as resurrected. Uh, And those are all historical issues that can be investigated, uh, which is what I spent two years of my life doing. 
And I, I became convinced based on that, that uh, in light of the affirmative evidence for Christianity, it would have taken me more faith to maintain my atheism than to become a Christian. Yeah. I just thought the scales tipped in favor of the truth of the Christian uh, message. In my own salvation story, my own story of my coming into relationship with Christ, it was at a David Wilkerson concert or a, a crusade. And he spoke about the importance of looking at Jesus as the example. And over the years, individuals like yourself, Josh McDowell, and others have moved me and inspired me to study apologetics from the perspective of being able to give a credible answer to those who ask questions. And uh, right. uh, what was it that, I mean, you, you shared about your atheism, uh, but kind of as the last question, what was it, was, was there a turning point, was there a single point of evidence, or was it a cumulative aspect of study that changed your position from atheism to a follower of Jesus? It really was a cumulative case. Uh, it was two years of delving into, you know, the science side, uh, the evidence of cosmology, physics, biochemistry, genetics, human consciousness, uh, origin of life, etc. Uh, and especially the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, how do we know that he really lived, he really died, he really was encountered afterwards? And uh, it was like the scales were tipping slowly over these two years until November the 8th of 1981. And that's when I... Uh, uh, sort of sat down and said, I gotta reach a verdict in this case for Christ. I gotta I gotta reach a conclusion. And uh, it became clear to me that the evidence uh, for Christianity outweighed the evidence against. And uh, then I read John one twelve that said uh, uh, that believing is not enough. I had to receive this free gift of God's grace and uh, when I did that then I would become a child of God and uh, that's very movingly portrayed in the film uh, by Mike Vogel that plays me. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is my life's taken on a whole new dimension, a whole new set of adventures that I never could have anticipated. Yeah, it's, it's a str I, there's a short movie made about me, not a feature film, but, but a short movie and a book that's been written. It's just kind of strange when you see someone else playing and living out the life that you've lived. Yeah, it, very odd. Yeah, yeah really exactly, odd. yeah. Well, in closing up, here, here's what I want to say. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, for those that are listening in, I want you to know most of my listeners and people that will be reading my stuff, they know where I'm coming from. And the reality is, is there's nothing wrong with the questions. The, you just want to make sure you're looking in the right place for the answers. I would strongly recommend and encourage people to see the movie when it comes out. I've read every book that jo Josh McDowell's written. I've read every book that Lee Strobel has written. I personally prefer Lee Strobel's material. I love Josh McDowell's material. But Case for Christ, A Case for Easter, uh, all of that, A Case for Faith, they're incredible books and testimony to who you are and what God has done for you. And I'm 100% I'm sure that for many of my listeners and many of my readers that they will find answers in the questions uh, that Josh asked himself and the answers that he discovered. So, Josh, thank you for your time so much. It's an honor. And uh, what I said, I said with, with sincerity, your books have been tremendous resources and I'm really looking forward to the movie uh, and seeing that when it comes out. Well, thanks, out. Mike. I sure appreciate it. Let me know what you think of it when okay. it comes out. I sure will. I will have no problem in <laughs> doing that. I've, I've, been, I've, been critical, <laughs> I've been critical of many Christian films, but Pure Flix, as certainly as of recent, have given me some hope. So that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Every, every film gets better, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. So thank you again for yeah. your time. Thank God you bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Bye.